the Moravians were very interesting. I would put them in the category of like Quakers, Anabaptists, more obscure reformers. So, you know, a lot of Reformation groups arose in the 15th century, and the Moravians were one of them. Peter Bowler was one of uh, the leading founders of Moravians in the United States. He started a movement in Georgia, and he started a movement in Pennsylvania. If you're familiar with the U.S. state of Pennsylvania, you know, uh, near Philadelphia, you'll recognize that several towns are called after biblical towns. There's Nazareth and Bethlehem. Well, those, those were more Moravian communities. They founded those communities. And so Peter Bowler, who was a universalist, he founded Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The Moravians, their, one of their missions was evangelism in the New World, including the Native Americans, but they were not really concerned about uh, getting Native Americans in, in, like baptized into a church, let's say. They were just more concerned about sharing the love of Christ and sharing their, their vision of the world that they saw through Christ, which included universalism, which included that all will be restored ultimately to a loving God and, and, and God has open arms of love towards everyone without, you know, them having to uh, jump through a lot of hoops. They had a totally different way of looking at evangelizing the Native Americans than, than what I was taught when I was in, uh, you know, when I was studying, quote, to be a missionary, evangelical missionary, you know, they had this book called Perspectives on the World Christian Movement, and they did, they wouldn't they wouldn't include that little you know detail about the Moravians in that book you know because it had universalist implications. But but that that was the way it was. So they did it wasn't I don't think it wasn't like that all of them were universalist, but the there was a lot of them that were, and even the founder uh, Peter Bowler of Bethlehem and, and Nazareth uh, was a universalist. So it's very interesting. He had an influence on John Wesley, who was his contemporary. And some people think that John Wesley uh, gravitated to Universalism at near the end of his life because of Bowler's influence. 